along with the church throughout history and the church around the world, we actually prepare our hearts for Christmas. And the preparation that the Christian family, the church family, has used for centuries, ever since uh, many, many generations ago, and what connects us with the people of God throughout history and the world are, are certain customs, certain traditions. All families have their church, uh, have their Christmas traditions, and this is one of ours as well here at Imago, which is what we call the lighting of the Advent candles. Advent means preparation, preparing our hearts and our minds for the coming of the Lord, and that's what we experience during Christmas. And Last week was actually the first Sunday in Advent, and that's why one of the candles is already lit, and today we're going to light the second candle. Every week before Christmas, we light a candle and we prepare our hearts. We remember what the purpose and the meaning of Christmas is. And last week, this first candle of Advent um, is actually a purple candle, and it symbolizes hope. So what the, the candle that's already lit is the candle of hope, knowing that Christmas gives us a real and genuine hope. The candle of hope is also sometimes called the prophecy candle in remembrance of the prophets of old, especially the prophet Isaiah, who we're going to be focusing on throughout the whole month of December, who foretold of the birth of Jesus who even before Jesus was born, he believed and he trusted that God would send a Savior. So this first candle represents the expectation that is felt in the hope that we have for the coming of our Savior, for the coming of the Messiah. The second candle, also a purple candle, which we're going to be lighting today, it represents faith. This is the candle of faith. And it's sometimes called the Bethlehem candle. It reminds us of Mary and Joseph's journey to Bethlehem. So together as a church family, we already have the candle of hope that is lit. And today, we're going to be participating in lighting the candle of faith. reminding us of the faith that Joseph and Mary had in that first Christmas, the faith that we have in our living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God, we thank you that Christmas is not just some kind of facade or going with the motions, Lord, but Christmas gives us a real hope and a real God, Lord, who came, who died, who rose again, who came with a mission to save, to save us, Lord, from ourselves, to save us, Lord, from sin and brokenness. And thank you, Lord, that today we get to place our minds on hope, and on faith. In this Christmas season, would you increase our hope and increase our faith? You are able, Lord. Do it in and through us by the power of your Holy Spirit. May we receive that gift of your presence, that gift of Emmanuel, in this Christmas season. Give us that peace that goes beyond any understanding. We love you, Lord, and we pray all of this in the faithful name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue now in our time of worship by opening up the Word of God. And today we're going to start our Advent series, which is going to be in the book of Isaiah. And it's a series that we're calling Great Expectations, Christmas Hope in God's Promises. And so this entire month of December, we're going to be diving deep into the book of Isaiah. And as we mentioned earlier, one of the candles that we lit uh, in remembrance of Advent, of preparing for 
the coming of the Lord is actually uh, a candle that is called the, the candle of hope. And in that candle of hope, we remember actually the, the, the hope that the prophet Isaiah had of the coming of the Lord. And so um, we're going to actually be focusing on uh, the scriptures in Isaiah throughout the month of, of December together. Through December, we'll be making preparations for Christmas and preparing our hearts and minds by reading some of the, the words in the book of Isaiah that really prophesied, who foretold the birth of Jesus Christ, and really who uh, reminds us of the expectation that we are called to feel as we prepare ourselves to welcome our coming Savior, to welcome Jesus, the Messiah. So today's scripture reading is going to be from Isaiah chapter 7, beginning at verse 9 to verse 14. Isaiah chapter 7, 9 to 14. Isaías capítulo 7, versículos 9 al 14. You can follow along in Spanish at home. I'll be reading the scripture for us in English from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 9 to 14. Let's hear now with open hearts and open ears from the word of God. Isaiah chapter 7, beginning at verse 9. If you do not stand firm in your faith, you will not stand at all. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now. You, house of David, it is not enough to try the patience of humans. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God with us. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this Christmas season that we get to reflect on, meditate on, and hold on to a living hope, Lord, and a, and a vibrant faith, God, that will never be crushed by anything, any circumstance, or any season. Lord, you came into this world in order to save us, in order to bring us back to yourself, through your humble presence, even in the form of a baby, you began the eternal work of salvation for all people and for all creation. So today, Lord, would you amaze us by the hope that we have in Christmas, Lord, by the hope of Emmanuel, God with us, by this story where you do extraordinary miracles through ordinary people. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The scriptures this morning are reminding us of the birth of Jesus Christ, of the promise, of the foretelling, of the prophecy that the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament had of a Savior, of Jesus Christ, that this would be God's sign. The virgin would give birth to a son, and his name would be Emmanuel. Now, these words that are groundbreaking sometimes, words like Emmanuel, um, we can take them for granted. Emmanuel literally means that God has come, that God is with us. And sometimes we can just overlook that incredible truth because we've heard it so many times and we feel like we are familiar with it. We overlook it. But when we pause and reflect that Jesus, Emmanuel, the name of the Savior of the world, even the name Jesus means the Lord saves. So whenever we proclaim or cry out the name of Jesus, that's a statement of faith. That's a statement and a promise of God because the name of Jesus means the Lord saves. And the Savior is Emmanuel, God with us. 
This birth story of Jesus is that we celebrate and we remember and meditate on during Christmas. It's not just any birth story or any manger, but really we're talking about a very particular birth story of a very specific Savior, the Savior of the world. Yes, it is Christmas, and we celebrate that Christmas season. I mean, you even see that the stage is decorated here, and we're so grateful for that, grateful to Charlotte, who came and, uh, and uh, decorated everything, looks lovely, grateful to everyone else's contributions as well. So yes, it is this Christmas season, and obviously we celebrate it together, but even more important than, um, than the particularities, than the decorations, than the particularities or the specifics of how the birth of Jesus occur, occurred with the manger and the animals, even more important than that is for us as God's people to remember not just what, but who. Who is being born? Who is entering into the world? That is the key part of this passage. That is the key hope that the prophet Isaiah was pointing to even before the birth of Jesus. Not just what would have happened, but who would come in to the world. And in fact, the most important part of this Christmas story that we're preparing for the most important part is not just what. It's not just the, 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 the particularities. It's not just the decorations or the animals or the manger. But the most, most important part of the birth of Jesus is not just what, but who. Who came in to the world. Through the season of Advent in the month of December, we're going to be reflecting on this question. We're going to be reflecting on the words of the prophet Isaiah, who really gives us great expectations for this Savior and this Messiah that would come. We're going to be finding Christmas hope in God's promises. And God's promises begin with this sign that Isaiah is talking about here. The sign of a child being born to a virgin, and his name would be Emmanuel, which means God with us. Or when I think about Emmanuel and the meaning of Emmanuel, even in modern language, I like to simply say Emmanuel means God shows up. God came down to the messiness that is the human experience. The hope we have in Christmas is that even in such a tumultuous and crazy and frustrating and anxious year of 2020, God comes down to our messiness. That is the uncertainty, the unfamiliarity of 2020. In Scripture, we see the story of how God entered the world through this Christmas story, through the promise of God. Christmas is how we become aware of God's presence with us here and now. Jesus Christ is God's gift to us. Jesus Christ is God with us. The true God, the one in whose image we are created, the one who made us for himself through this event. Christmas is always a celebration, but it's a celebration of an event of an event called the Incarnation. Now that can sound like a very huge word, but the Incarnation simply means that God became human in Jesus Christ. It means that God showed up, that God takes action, God takes initiative to save us and restore our connection back to Him. The event of the Incarnation is actually the main event that we celebrate during the Christmas season. Just like we celebrate the resurrection and the, the cross and the resurrection uh, during uh, Holy Week and Easter and uh, the resurrection specifically in Easter, during the Christmas season, what we prepare our hearts for is the coming of our Savior to experience the presence of God with us. So just to be clear, what we believe as people who follow Jesus, who place our faith and hope in Jesus, 
we believe then uh, we 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 believe that God showed up. We believe in this event of the incarnation. We believe that God is with us here and now. Um, God broke into history to really be able to restore us. He saw something precious that was broken, and God did something about it. He wasn't just passive. He entered into the messiness of the human story. He became like us through Jesus Christ to save us from sin and to save us from ourselves. This action, this presence of God with us, this is the gift of God. And this is how we witness to God's reality. This is how we witness to Emmanuel, God with us, or God showing up. And let's be clear about this. Let's be honest. This event of God showing up, this is what Christmas is truly all about. Christmas is about this gospel event, this good news called the Incarnation or Emmanuel, where God shows up, where God comes down to us. To believe in the good news of Christmas is to believe that we can now know and truly be known by God and connect with God only because God himself has come. God came to us through Jesus Christ. God showed up in Jesus Christ. And in this Christmas season, my prayer is this, that we would be able to receive the gift of God's presence. That we would be able to experience the gift of God here and now, right where you are. Because of Jesus, there is a way You can enter into his presence. You can connect with him in this season. Even if you felt disconnected or far from God, he is drawing near to you. Christmas marks a beautiful collision. It's it's a beautiful collision of heaven and earth meeting and colliding in, in a unique and wonderful way. Time and eternity are colliding It all ties together in the birth of Jesus. Time, eternity, heaven and earth, it all collides in this event of the birth of a Savior. Christmas is not just mostly about, but it is all about Jesus. Again, Christmas is not just about a manger or about the gifts, but about the miracle of God showing up, of heaven coming down. It's easy to miss the true significance of this remarkable event because we can't even put it into words how amazing it is. Jesus enters into the world to willingly fulfill his mission to save us and to restore our broken relationship with God, a broken relationship that's been caused by sin. Again, it's important to know how he entered with the excitement of the angels singing and the shepherds visiting, but of first importance, of first priority is not just what happened, but who is entering, who has entered the human story, God himself. The miracle of Christmas is that God becomes like us. God becomes like us so that we could be with God. In the Christmas story, it's a story of a God who enters into the human condition, the messiness, the brokenness. And he enters into this story of ours in order to fulfill a mission. Salvation and redemption, all of that now is made possible through this miraculous gift of God, this gift called Emmanuel, God with us. The Christmas story is a story that tells us about what Isaiah was talking about thousands of years ago, even before Jesus was born. 
the Christmas story, the birth of Jesus, is a reminder that it is possible to know what's coming and still be surprised. Remember, Isaiah talked about this generations before Jesus was born, and everyone was still surprised. The Christmas story reminds us of this. that It's possible to know what's coming and still be surprised when we really pay attention. And my prayer is that in this Advent season of 2020, where so much has happened, that we can be delightfully surprised by this Christmas story, by God showing up in those areas of our lives that we didn't even know we were there, in those hidden places, in those places of shame, in those places of darkness or anger, that we would allow God to show up and shine his light there in this season. Jesus has come. He's come to save us. To save us from sin, to save us from ourselves, to save us from... to save us holistically our insides and our outsides. And this is good news. It's good news for everyone. That's why it's called the gospel. The gospel is a good news announcement. It's the good news of Christmas. It's a redefinition of how we view reality. The powers and authorities of of the day uh, when Jesus was born and even when um, Isaiah was prophesying about this amazing uh, Savior and Messiah that would come, there were always powers and authorities and principalities that were trying to discourage or trying to convince the people of God that were even trying to convince Joseph and Mary as they were going on their, on their journey, trying to convince them to believe the biggest lie of all. And the biggest lie is this. When, we're, when someone or, an, or powers and authorities try to convince us that this is all there is. Some of us have felt that way in a sense of despair in 2020 with all the trials, all the challenges, all the pain. Some of us have questioned, and I've been in that place too. We've questioned, is this all that there is. But the hope that we have in Christmas is the reality that Jesus enters into this world. Jesus enters into 2020 to proclaim that there's more. This is not all there is. There's more. Do not just settle or conform for just this because there's more. This is not all that there is. The gift of God is that there's more. And He always makes a way. No matter what you may be feeling toward the end of this year, He always makes a way. He turns our attention and He reminds us that this is not all there is because there's more. There's more to life. There's more to your calling. There's more to your identity. The gift of God is that because of Jesus Christ, there's more. There is more faith available to you. There is more hope available to you. The creator of the world enters into this human story. He could have come in any form. He could have come in the form of a warrior. He could have come in the form of a giant. But instead, the creator of all things enters into the human story in the form of a baby. I really think that that's just an amazing way that God humbled himself and humbles uh, humbles us as well. He redefines what power and authority is by entering into this human story as a baby. The hope of Christmas is a reminder of the power of the gospel to turn reality right side up. Oftentimes we live our lives upside down. The gospel comes to turn things right side up. When Jesus was born, there was a local ruler. His name was Herod. And Herod tried to impose his power through violence and intimidation. 
And then he heard that a new king, a new savior was to be born. But then out of anything that God could have shown up as, God comes in the form of a child. God comes in the form of a baby. And what does he do? What does he do those first few years? The Bible, when talking to us about Jesus' childhood, actually just tells us that he grew in wisdom and stature. That's it. But what does he do? Jesus appears. He simply shows up. He shows up and that changes everything. I mean, it's kind of like some of us that have children. When you think about babies, what do they do? Not much. They cry a lot. They go to the bathroom. They need to be fed. They do all those things. They help us lose a bunch of sleep. But what do babies do? Not much, really. But babies show up. And once a baby shows up, a baby changes everything. Life will never be the same. (laughs) Similar to the Christmas story, God shows up in the form of a child, in the form of a baby, and that changes everything. So in this Christmas season, in this Advent, before doing anything, let's be like Jesus and just show up. Jesus shows up and he gives us the gift of his presence The birth of Jesus holds together the presence of God, the promises of God, and the power of God. All in the form of a child. All in the form of a child who will eventually be the Savior of the world. He took the cross. He rose again. He saved us. He came. He died. And He rose. Jesus entered into the world humbly, but also triumphantly with power to redefine power, to redefine strength and authority, to redefine all things vertically and horizontally, to redefine our relationship with God and our relationships with each other. That's what Jesus came to do, to give us the gift of hope through relationships. We're now, because of Jesus, because this gift of Emmanuel, we are now restored back to God and we're restored back to each other. Jesus redefines our relationship with God and our relationship to ourselves, to our own identity, and our relationship to one another. We see this expressed in so many different ways, but Jesus came to save all people in all times, in all places. Every tribe, tongue, and nation invited to this gift of God's salvation. In this Christmas season, we celebrate that God is with us. We witness to God showing up as we place our trust in Him. The Lord is with us. He works in us and through us. And we are empowered to show up for others because God has shown up for us. We receive the gift of Emmanuel. When by faith we simply believe and accept the reality that God has shown up and that changes everything. But then during this Christmas season, we're also able to give the gift of Emmanuel when we show up for others. We show up when we serve, when we do life together, when we remain in covenant together as a church community, when we invite others into this new life with God, when we share the gospel with our children, with our family, with our community. You know, here's the fact. Life really all comes down to relationships. And relationships are based on showing up. Honest, com- uh, through honesty, communication, and trust, that's all summed up in showing up. That's how we build relationships. With our family, with our friends, with our neighbors, 
our children, our family and community, they may or may not remember this year what gifts you get them. If you ask them in 2021 Christmas, they may or may not remember. But I guarantee you this, they will remember whether or not you showed up, whether or not you were present, whether or not you were available. We receive the gift of God with us, the gift of Emmanuel, and we are empowered to show up for others. Even at a distance in 2020, that is a gift and that is a blessing. We receive the gift of Emmanuel and we can give the gift of Emmanuel. God showed up for us. We are now empowered to show up for others. Instead of focusing only on a Christmas to-do list, and if you're anything like our family or like me, you already have a to-do list going in your head, maybe some things that you want to accomplish or do or shop for or, you know, buy online or whatever it may be. But how about in light of this new year and this unique year, in light of reflecting on God's gift of Emmanuel, the gift of God's presence, we can also practice and create a Christmas list together where we go beyond just a list of doing, but we begin to think about what it means to simply be. Sure, we can do all the fun traditions. We can buy presents. I know most of us are probably shopping online or, you know, trunk pickup or whatever it may be, unique ways this year than it was other years. We're wrapping gifts, we're sending cards, shopping for food, seeing the lights. But this year, I believe that we can take a moment to pause as a church family and simply go beyond a Christmas to-do list. And instead, this year, we can ask God to guide us and help us with a Christmas to-be list where we're taking a step beyond just doing. Where instead of only buying presents, this year, I can be present. I can give the gift of presence. Instead of just wrapping gifts, I can wrap someone in a much-needed hug, especially someone in my own household. Instead of just sending cards, I can send peace. I can pass the peace of Christ to someone who may be in need of that, an anxious heart or an anxious mind. Instead of just putting up lights, you and I can be the light. We can shine the light of Jesus wherever we find ourselves. We can continue to shine the light of Christ this Christmas season. And in fact, this is the gift of God that He invites us into this. But He will also do the work in and through us we can serve as channels of God's love and channels of God's blessing to those around us. That's how we experience and we get to experiment with the gift of Emmanuel. So to put this very simply, what we celebrate in Christmas is a miracle. Christmas is a miracle. It's a miracle that began with these words that were pronounced and given by the prophet Isaiah in chapter 7, verse 14, where he says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel the gift of God showing up, the presence of God that is with us. That's a miracle. The Scripture announces this miracle 
Notice it's an announcement. It's not an argument. It's not an explanation. But it's an announcement. When Jesus was born, and we read this in Matthew chapter 2, verse 2, there were wise men, also called Magi, who went to visit Jesus shortly after he was born. And they saw his star when it rose, and they went to worship him. One of the first actions that were taken in the birth of Jesus was the action of worship, of surrender. As we close out the year in 2020, what do you need to surrender? How can your surrender be a form of your worship in this month as we prepare for Christmas, as we close out the year? Surrendering as a form of worship and praising God, that's a fitting response to the miracle of Christmas. So yes, Christmas is a miracle. And what can we do with this Christmas miracle? What can we do with God's gift to us? Well, the very first thing we can do is just simply receive the gift. Receive the gift of God's presence. Share the gift of God's presence. Then give God all the glory. What we do with this Christmas miracle is exactly that. We, don't, we can't control it. We can't do anything to add to it or take away from it. But what we do with this Christmas miracle is we receive it. That's the grace of God. We receive it. We share it. And we give God all the glory. Christmas is, again, this miraculous gift of God. I can say it over and over again. So in these coming days, when you give or receive a gift, or when you see decorations, or uh, you write a card, or if you're participating in our worship services online, and inviting others into that as well. My prayer is this. Let's not just stop there. All those Christmas signs, they point to something so much greater. To Jesus. To someone so much greater. The Christmas traditions, the gifts, the trees, the lights, they're all pointing to the amazing truth that the child who entered the earth on Christmas is the true king of the world. The creator has entered into the creation. That's the Christmas miracle. That's the gift of this season that God showed up and God is with us no matter what. So in this Advent season, in this season of preparation, may we prepare to celebrate the birth and the coming of our Savior at Christmas time. We, just as those first who witnessed the birth of Jesus, we've come here for that purpose. We need a living hope. We need a Christmas hope. We need a miracle. Christmas provides that miracle. The miracle of Emmanuel. God with us. He is the Lord. He is the one that will reign forever and ever. Jesus is the gift of God with us. He is with you. He is with us. He is God with us here and now. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you go beyond any expectations that we have. The gift of Emmanuel is greater than any gift that we could ask for. 
And Lord, I pray that you would just make that clear for every one of us. That miraculous gift. Make your word continuously grow in and through us through the power of this miracle. During this Christmas, we sell, during this Christmas season, Lord, during this Advent season, yes, there's a lot of grieving. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of sorrow, Lord. But we hold on to your joy. We hold on to faith. We hold on to hope that will never be broken or shattered. During this Christmas season, Lord, we celebrate that the Word became flesh. And God, we pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that your Word would become flesh in us. Give us the gift of Emmanuel, of God with us, and help us to give the gift of showing up for others because you've shown up for us. We pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus.